Hi, Patrick Moore High School. This is Susie from Math VIP, a math club at Quant Teacher High School. Due to various circumstances, we prepared an online math project. Though we cannot talk face to face, I hope the contents of this presentation can be delivered to you. It's hard times everywhere, but I hope you stay strong and healthy. Now let's move on to our presentation. Today's presentation will be about the marvelous cycloid curve. To start, let's think about the curve that one point on a moving shape would make. If you were to roll an equilateral triangle on a straight line, what would the trace of the vertex look like? In the case of a triangle, it would look like this. If you were to roll a square, it would look like this. Then how would a dot on a circle leave its trace? As you can see, it would draw this certain curve, which is called a cycloid. A cycloid is a very particular curve that has an important role in algebra. In order to thoroughly understand the concept, let's take a look at the equation of cycloid made by a circle with a radius of a. The equation of cycloid can be called a parametric equation that takes theta, which is a variable representing a certain angle, as a parameter. That is, theta can be used to illustrate the coordinates of a point. When addressing the coordinates of a point, we must consider we must consider the circle's parallel and rotational displacement. Since the circle moves without alteration, the length of its path is the same as its arc, which is a theta. Then if you consider that this point moves less by the sine theta, the x coordinate can be shown as the following. The y coordinate can also be solved in the same way. Now that we've got the equation, we can think about the length and area of cycloids, which show like this. Cycloids also have physical characteristics. Out of these five choices, which path would be the fastest? As you can see, the black cycloid curve is the shortest line, also called the Pochistochrome. You may be confused, so I'll introduce a physics problem related to this. The best way to understand this problem is to draw a velocity time graph. The area under the graph means the moving distance, and because the moving distance of path A and B are the same, the area under each graph is also the same. Since we know that the sine of the slope's gradient and acceleration are proportional and the two objects arrive at the same time, we can draw each graph and come to the conclusion that the initial speed of object A was faster. From this problem, we can realize that an object's initial acceleration affects the amount of time it takes for an object to arrive at its destination. If two objects start on a different slope, the one to arrive faster would be the object with the bigger initial acceleration. That is, if the slope's initial gradient is steeper, the object would arrive faster. Berkistochrome can be found quite often in our daily lives. For example, Iwa is a type of roof tile that was used for centuries in Korean tradition. Korean ancestors made these in the form of cycloids as to let rainwater drain quickly and protect buildings from degradation. They use mathematical knowledge to solve daily problems wisely. Another example is that when an eagle hunts its prey, it makes its descent in the form of a cycloid curve. Other than brachistochrome, another feature of cycloids is isochronism. In this case, when you let go of the bull at a certain point, the time it takes for the ball to arrive at the bottom is always the same. We can show this as a distance duration graph, as you can see on the screen. This image shows the isochronism of pendular movement, which shows similarities with the cycloid curve. Now we're going to talk about the various forms of cycloid, but let me ask you a question first. What would the moon's trajectory look like to a stationary observer on the sun? Think of the center as the sun and the center of the outer circle as the earth. The circumference of the outer circle becomes the revolutional orbit of the moon 
so the moon will be positioned at a point on the outer circle. The moon will draw curves as shown on the screen, which is called epicycloid. An epicycloid is a curve that is drawn by a point on a circumscribed circle. The epicycloid form appears in various ways according to the radius, such as, as you can see on the screen. If the direction of rotation of the moon and the earth were opposite, what would the moon's trajectory look like? As a different case, when a curve is drawn by an inscribed circle, this is called a hypocycloid. A hypocycloid also takes many shapes, depending on the radius. Hypocloids and epicycloids are also used in many ways, especially in the field of engineering. We can find both in gears. Convex and concave parts of a gear are each part of an epicycloid and a hypocycloid. The number of teeth can be altered by giving changes to the two circles. In the case of a gear with two teeth, in the left picture, the contact surface is steep, which allows the effective delivery of power. But on the right, power is not delivered properly and is inadequate to be used as gear. The most effective form would be to remove the curve that cannot deliver power and make the circumscribed circle larger. In fact, when designing a gear, various factors are taken into consideration. The equation of the gear can be calculated using epicycloid and hypocycloid. As introduced throughout the presentation, cycloids not only have great mathematical value, but can also be used in numerous aspects of our lives. That's all for today's presentation. Stay safe and thank you for your attention. I hope my presentation about cycloids has been useful. And now with these two experiments, we'll show you how a cycloid actually works. Um, first with this one, we'll be showing you how a cycloid is actually the fastest descent line. As you can see, the cycloid arrives faster at the destination. And with this one, this is an experiment that I helped build ourselves. And with this one, we'll show you how at whichever point you put the balls, it would arrive at the destination at the same time. As you can see, both balls arrived at the same time. And we'll be sending these kits for you guys to make a cycloid curve um, by yourselves. And we'll be sending instructions so you can um, have a useful and fun time. And I hope that this international exchange has been useful and it will be a memorable experience for you guys.